Welcome, and thank you all for coming this morning. Here with me are my Chief Deputy City Attorney, Ron Flynn, and Deputies Elaine O'Neill, Ann Johnson, and Randy Parent, and Yvonne Murray, who have been working very, very diligently on our investigation in this case, and I want to thank them for their, <coughs> for their efforts. Um, part of my responsibility as City Attorney is to protect San Francisco residents and taxpayers from unfair or unlawful business practices. That's why this morning my office filed a lawsuit against the developer of the Millennium Tower. The reason for our action is simple, and that's because the facts in this case are so clear. But it does not make them any less disturbing. My office's investigation shows that the developer, Mission Street Development LLC, knew for at least a year before they began selling condominiums that this 58-story residential building was sinking much faster than expected. Yet, they went ahead and sold condominiums for a handsome profit without telling the buyers about the situation, even though they were legally required to disclose it. Buyer beware doesn't cut it here. Someone selling real estate must disclose details about known property conditions. The law is very clear on that. When construction of the tower was completed in February 2008, it had already settled almost six inches. Six inches was the maximum amount the developer's own geotechnical engineer had predicted the building would sink over its lifetime. It had almost reached that point more than a year before the developer began even selling condominiums. By February 2009, just before the condos went on the market, the tower had settled 8.3 inches, more than two inches over the maximum amount previously predicted by the developer's own geotechnical engineer. After May 2009, the developer had data showing that the tower's settlement was continuing to increase and that it was settling at different rates in different parts of the property, which could lead to a, the building tilting. Now, the building has sunk 16 inches and news reports say it is tilting two inches at the base. Before they had sold a single condominium, Mission Street Development LLC knew their building had sunk more than it was supposed to during its lifetime and that it was still sinking. Yet they didn't tell the home buyers and they're required to do so under the law. It's that simple. Mission Street Development LLC turned over 1,900 uh, pages of documents, including disclosure, inform disclosure information about the property as a result of a subpoena that my office issued in September. These disclosures docu documents discussed everything from the color and veining of marble to noting that the size and types of plants in the common areas of the building could change. But they left out the most important detail. Nowhere that the city is aware of did Mission Street Development LLC disclose that the building had settled much more and much faster than it was designed to do. That's not just a bit of information prospective home buyers would like to know. It's information the developer was legally required to provide. And it is at the heart of the case that the, home the homeowners themselves have filed against the tr uh, Transbay Joint Powers Authority and the city and county of San Francisco. My office is bringing this lawsuit in the form of a cross-complaint against Mission Street Development LLC. We filed it today in the case where a number of Millennium homeowners have sued the Transbay Joint Powers Authority and its members, including the city and county of San Francisco. As you are all aware, the authority is building a transit center next to the Millennium Tower site. San Francisco is one of the members of the authority, but the authority is a separate legal entity from the city. In our cross-complaint, we're seeking damages from the developer that the court deems appropriate. In 2013, when it closed its new sales, the Millennium Tower brought in what the San Francisco Business Times described as a, quote, massive $750 million in revenue. The average price for a condo at that time was $1.8 million. My office has a duty to protect all the taxpayers of San Francisco. We are not going to sit by and allow a developer or anyone else to enrich themselves at the expense of others by hiding crucial information that they're required by law to disclose. That gave the developer, in this case, an unfair advantage against competitors and it cheated home buyers out of the information that they needed to make an informed choice. And with that, uh, that summarizes what the action that we've taken this morning and I'm happy to take any questions that anybody has. 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Gentlemen first. It's going to go in order. No, you not. And was there a choice to file a criminal uh, complaint? Uh, this sounds like a, a civil complaint. This is a civil complaint. Uh, I do not have the power under the law to file a criminal action. And um, this is a civil complaint, and that's what I'm empowered to do under the law. And we're not making any reference to any criminal action here, uh, nor have I made any referral to uh, the district attorney or uh, uh, any other person or entity that would have the ability to make that inquiry. That's correct. The homeowners that sued the Tran Trans Bay Joint Powers Authority and the city and county of San Francisco. Well, it, it, it depends on what the finding is in this case because it's a it's the damages are according to proof, and in the event that uh, there was a finding against the city, th this would be a suit for contribution and indemnity against um, uh, against. Uh, the developer saying that they are the real party at fault. Is there any sort of measure that you're seeking? Or no. Monetary no, monetary damages, yeah. Two questions, one of which has to be um, how's this thing going to perform in a major earthquake? Because that's where, like with the state, you're always talking about the bigger thing and there's monetary damages for paying for that. Is this thing going to do what it's supposed to do in an earthquake? Well, I think that uh, that's what everybody, that, that should be the primary concern of everybody that we're protecting life and safety. And I know that there is a uh, review going on by other uh, uh, city agencies to make sure that, um, uh, that, the, that the building is safe. From everything that I have been told, the building is safe uh, and uh, could, withstand, could perform in an earthquake. And that's not the focus of my inquiry at this point. Um, but I'm sure and I know that uh, the city uh, and the mayor and the Department of Billing Inspection and everybody is focused on ensuring uh, public health and safety. Well, I, I would disagree with that. The fact of the matter is that while uh, the Department of Building Inspection uh, was aware about settlement in 2009, DBI did not receive any further information about the continuing settlement and the occurrence of differential settlement until uh, this past uh, July. So th that's something that will be discussed in litigation. Next question. intervening on the lawsuit saying they should go to, against the Millennium developers. If they lose their right to sue against the city, which is what you want apparently, and then they go against the developers and the developers don't have any money, they're essentially out of luck. Um, how do you uh, sort of compensate for both? You're claiming that they're wrongly suing the city and that the DBI shouldn't have the responsibility of telling them. And on the other hand, you're saying it's all Millennium's fault, but they may not have the ability to pay. Well, the fact of the matter is, Jackson, that um, I think what you're referring to is a lawsuit that was filed against the city and an answer that um, we filed, that we refiled today. Um, but we've been quite clear all along that the um, focal point uh, of um, this needs to be on the responsible party, and that is uh, the developer. Because if you look at the claim that's put forth in the complaint against the city, it's basically for nuisance and inverse condemnation and a claim that there was a diminution in value uh, because of what has occurred. Well, if there was a diminution, diminution in value, it was because there was not adequate disclosure made to the, um, uh, the purchasers by uh, the developer at the time the transaction was completed. And that is what caused whatever diminution in value has occurred. So um, from our perspective, the focal point needs to be on the responsible party here, and that is the developer who um, uh, has known about this all along and uh, did not disclose information that they were requ required to disclose to their purchasers or prospective purchasers. I, I'm sorry, I'll come back to you. Yeah. Certainly, 
I do. Absolutely. I think that, um, <laughs> you know, this is uh, every uh, uh, homeowner's worst nightmare. I mean, we've all, a lot of people go through this. They know what happens, what an investment it is to, to go and, and purchase a home or a condominium. Sometimes you have people's entire savings that they put forth to, to purchase something. So um, that's why what has occurred here is so egregious and why California law is so strict and expansive uh, when it comes to what you must disclose to a prospective purchaser. The whole reason for the expansive law in this area is so that people don't get ripped off and uh, that they're protected. And that's what, in, in our view, what makes this particularly egregious when you look at all the disclosures that have been forth, and you're talking about marble veining and everything else, and you don't have the most important thing, which goes to the heart of what one would consider if they were going to make a transaction. So yes, I have tremendous compassion for these folks, and that's why um, we're stepping in to make sure that the, that the, the developer, uh, that the city, is making sure that the responsible party here is, um, is, uh, is um, uh, uh, paying for their misdeed. You had a question. Yes, sir. Uh, I wanted to ask, is it purely a failure to disclose? It is. Okay. It is. And, uh, sorry about that. Thank you. Okay. This gentleman here. What does the most recent happen to you guys receive? I'm sorry? What does the most recent disclosure package you reviewed? What, what we, we received 1,900 pages of documents in response to a subpoena that we issued in September. And what, what the transaction, the purchase, and what year? Oh, okay. 2011. Yeah. Jackson. Um, don't you think that although it is the Millennium's responsibility, aren't you a little embarrassed for the city that they didn't even bother to tell anybody, given that it's the city's job to maintain public safety here? And obviously, if they know Millennium isn't telling owners to step in and actually do the right thing when they won't. I mean, in 2009, the city clearly knows that they exceeded, uh, by all measures, the predicted level of settlement. And then they watch as Millennium fails to disclose. Clearly, the city knows that Millennium's not telling the owners. I mean, that's readily apparent, isn't it? I mean, no, I don't think the so. The city should just sit there and let them commit a crime? Well, let's be careful with the words we use. The gentleman here asked about criminal activity, and I'm not going to say that anybody's committing a crime because I don't have any evidence of that. Okay, so let me uh, answer your question. We, DBI, there's no doubt that uh, DBI knew about settlement in 2009, but it, it wasn't until this past July that DBI had uh, additional information about um, the continuing settlement and the um, uh, occurrence of differential settlement. Now, so they didn't have all that information, number one. But number two, to, your, to, your, to, to the second part of your question, you have to think about who's the one that's dealing with the purchasers. The city uh, is not in the position of knowing what the developer is disclosing to uh, prospective purchasers or not. We're not in privity of contract. The city doesn't inject itself in every real estate inquiry or transaction that is going on. And we don't know what they're disclosing uh, 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 to prospective purchasers. And as a, it was only as a result of our subpoena that we've received the disclosure packages that went to the purchasers and we saw what uh, was and was not being disclosed. If we followed your logic, Fact of the matter is you would have the city being the insurer on every potential uh, home purchase in San Francisco stepping in and, and, and trying to monitor and injecting itself in every real estate transaction to see if um, the proper disclosures were made or weren't made. And well, that is simply... safe condition that you say that they should have disclosed to They should have. So then your city is aware of an unsafe condition and lets the Millennium get away with not telling? No. I mean, don't they have an obligation to find out what's going on here and actually step in? I mean, it's we, like the police saying, well, nobody reported a crime, even though I saw no. it right in front of me. Nobody reported it, so I don't get to make an arrest. Well, we didn't realize or we didn't know that, the, that uh, Millennium wasn't living up to its obligation. And the second that we got the information uh, that we weren't aware that they were living up to their obligation, we have taken steps to uh, address that. So um, I would say, uh, you know, we operate, laws are on the books, people expect or uh, that they're gonna live up to those obligations and we become aware that they're not. We're gonna take action and we're gonna be aggressive about it and that's what we're doing today. 
I'm sorry? In my office? Well, I have a code enforcement office, that division. That's why I'm asking you the question. No, well, I, I, as DBI has gotten information, Department of Building Inspection, that's who I presume you're asking about. They have gotten involved. They are making sure uh, and working to make sure that the building uh, is safe. And I don't think that anybody is walking away and trying to say it's not uh, anybody's problem. The city is being aggressive in terms of analyzing the public health and safety and in terms of disclosures and making sure that uh, Millennium followed their obligation under the law. That's something that we're here to talk about today. I can't speak to that. That's something uh, that the Department of Building Inspection, uh, I'm sure, will be continuing about continually evaluating and working with the developer uh, as um, this progresses. And uh, it's not something I can speak to. Yeah. Yeah, that, I, that is still, still yeah I, I can't speak to any cr criminal inquiry. Uh, that's something for um, uh, the district attorney or somebody else. That's not, um, that's, I have, we're unaware of anything at this point, but if we were to become aware of something in the course of uh, our case and litigation that we thought um, uh, demanded a criminal, criminal inquiry, we would make that referral. But I don't have any information about that or any indication of that at this well, point. Are you seeking monetary damages? Yeah. It's, this is all about this is about monetary damages. Yes, correct. I didn't hear it. No, you according to proof, as the uh, uh, that the court determines, and uh, as as we go through the case. Have you yeah. ever had a case like this? Is this uh, unprecedented? Have you ever uh, sued a developer or something like this? Oh, we su I mean, <laughs> we sue people and we entities in all terms, the time. In terms of the magnitude of this. Well, this is obviously a. I don't think that. I mean, this is obviously a very very serious case, and. Uh, a big case and a high profile case, but you know what, I'm loath to say that uh, one case is more important than another when, you know, homeowners uh, uh, feel aggrieved or their, their safety is threatened in a particular project, even if it's not a, a high visibility one. But obviously this is a very, very major case. It's a big development and I think this is uh, unprecedented in terms of the attention it's getting here in the city. I, I can't tell you at this point. And are you investigating that? Is that part of the Well, we obviously, d during the course of this litigation, we'll be looking at, at everything. Uh, obviously, we're going to have to in terms of uh, uh, handling this case, and we'll, we'll get to the bottom of everything. I wouldn't say that, actually, because I think that um, uh, here in California, because there are such robust and protective disclosure laws, I think that you'll find that uh, in most instances, um, in purchases of homes and developments, that uh, there is a lot of disclosure, a lot of disclosure, because buyers are sophisticated and sellers and developers are sophisticated as well, and they know what it is that the law requires. And that's what makes this particularly egregious, is that you have a very, very sophisticated developer. But rest assured that if we become aware uh, that uh, someone is blatantly um, uh, not living up to their legal responsibility, we are going to uh, investigate and take action where appropriate. But I would not say that this is to send a message because uh, I think that most sophisticated developers and purchasers uh, are well aware of their legal responsibility and live up to it. Dennis? Yeah, Vic. No, that is the developer of the, um, obviously an affiliate who was responsible for the sale 
of the condos in the beginning of, 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 the, of the, um, the marketing of them. An affiliate. An affiliate. Yes. Take two more questions. What happened to wait, wait. So JK hasn't had a chance. Okay. Um, uh, why did you choose to do a cross complaint on existing seat rather than something under 17200? Because we thought this was the best vehicle for the case. And we knew that we had to file um, uh, an answer. Uh, and ordinarily, when in a case like this, uh, if, you, uh, uh, if you're going to file an answer and you know that you have a cross claim, you would you would choose to go this route. Two more questions. I'll get to you, Jackson. One, for the one in there. Um, obviously, in, in terms of our case, the um, millennium will be, um, uh, or I should say, let me be clear, Mission Street Development will be served and uh, with the complaint, and they'll have an opportunity to respond uh, and file an answer, and uh, we'll see where that goes. millions of dollars, much more than the average crime, for failing to disclose a serious prob problem with this building and walked away with the money. Isn't that theft or fraud? I mean, why isn't this a crime? Uh, uh, you know, there are, when you file a criminal action, that might, I know that, that, that makes for a, um, uh, a uh, sexy sound bite, but uh, cr uh, all crimes have specific elements. Uh, and uh, as we've reviewed this, uh, to date, we are obviously. I'm not a criminal lawyer, but we are reviewing this, and we see um, uh, a violation of law, civil law. And if, in the event that we felt that there was uh, elements of a, a crime that were fulfilled, we would refer it. But, but we do not see any evidence of criminal activity here. And um, we filed an action, a civil action. This is in the context of a lawsuit. And I, I, I don't, I don't, I do not throw the word out crimes and criminal activity uh, uh, willy nilly without having evidence of that. And I don't have any evidence of that. And if I did, I'd make the referral to the appropriate authority for them to make that determination. Okay. Can you tell Thank. Us how homeowners will actually receive the, the award that the court might make? How does that mechanism work? No, that's not what. We, we're going to have to see where this goes. This would be about if there was liability that was found, would there be contribution or who would be held responsible for um, payment of damages? It, the it damages do not go to the, the We'll have to see where things go in this case. There could be other ways. At this point, it's premature for anybody to, to, to talk about that. But, if, but if you think about damages, yeah, but I can't talk about, I, I don't know what a mechanism would be because we're at the early stages of the litigation. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you.